Hello there, and thank you for checking out Ricochet, the second plugin from Rocket Lasso. And I am very, very, very excited to finally get to show this off. To find Ricochet, you go to extensions or possibly plugins, depending on which version of Cinema that you're using, and you click on Rocket Ricochet. It's called just Ricochet, but Rocket, so that if we release more spline tools, they'll live together in the menu. Clicking Ricochet, you can now see a single spline line is being generated coming out from Z+. Let's see what we can actually do with that. Let's start out real basic, creating a cube, and drop the cube as a child of the ricochet. As soon as we do, we see the cube disappears, and now we have a spline bouncing around inside of it. So much like something like a subdivision surface will take a cube, the original cube is consumed, and it returns something new, a smooth cube. This is consuming whatever we drop in as a child, and it will bounce around inside and return that final spline. Uh, before we go any further, Cube is fine, but let's make something a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to grab this Quixel Megascan asset. This is the broken statuette and drop that as a child. So now we see that we've got the ricochet bouncing around inside of it and the entire model getting consumed again. So selecting ricochet, the first thing to note is we've got a random seed. We can tick that up if we want. And we also have this handy little button to just randomize the seed, jumping it around all over the place. Next up, I'm going to skip to the length. So here's a length of 1,000 total. And this is the head's about the size of a cube. So let's crank up the length to 10,000. So that's pretty good. Let's put an extra zero in there. Anywhere that we could, we unclamped the values. So we can say this is now 100,000 long, and that is now a lot of bounces. But let's go and add another zero in there and get 1 million in length deselecting that let's zoom through this head and you can see how many lines are generated by bouncing again and again and again inside of this head ricochet is very powerful and very quick at what it does let's put this back to default and drag this up and look at some other very basic settings you see that we've got angle which is set to random mode and it's currently 15 degrees we can drop this down and now it's just bouncing kind of naturally the way a laser might off the surface of the object bouncing around all over the place. And we can crank that way up and now it can rotate up to 90 degrees and bounce in all sorts of different directions. That is some nice straightforward length, some randomness. Let's go and lower that randomness. Actually, I'll lower it all the way down and look at the next basic setting and that is surface. If I start increasing this, it's going to take on the angle of the polygon it collides with and it should be nice and clear what's happening if I crank this up all the way. You can now see very much it's following the surface of the object as it takes on the rotation of each individual polygon. So that combines very nicely with randomness. We can say, okay, it's a little bit random on top of that. We could increase that length again to 100,000. And you can see it's kind of wrapping around all over the place on the model. You can even see the model sort of pop out again. Getting rid of that randomness would probably even help that more to see the shape. At any point, we can also say, hey, Different random seed, I want to see a, oh, actually, with no randomness, there's nothing to randomize. So even one degree of randomness. Now, if I hit randomize, you're going to see a completely different layout because every time it bounces, it's another 1% of random, one degree of randomness, which has a butterfly effect where it starts becoming very chaotic by the end and a completely different layout. That is now returning a nice complex spline that, you know, is really quick to go and play around with. So let's make this just a little bit fancier and talk about our source geometry. Now, I was just talking about how this is behaving like a, some sort of generator, where if we were to create an extrude, it consumes the spline and it returns that final geometry. This is consuming geometry and returning a spline. But we have a different mode. Source geometry can be set to object mode instead. So now it doesn't care about any children inside, so we can pull that out. And instead, it wants to have an object dragged in to this object list. So dragging in that model, it should now be doing the exact same effect. You can now see it's spiraling around all over inside of it. However, and let's pull back on that surface, you can see we, we can't really see the spline anymore because it's inside the object. Now, if we wanted, we could go inside the object and we could also manually hide the object and now see the spline. But we created a handy button. When you are in object mode, there is a hide sources button. So if I click that, it will actually create a render tag and a display tag. So now I'll hide ricochet just for a moment you see that the model has converted to wireframe mode and it won't render these are the exact same settings that happen inside of the cinema mesh deformer so we just thought that was a very handy way of displaying this and like i said if i hit render that model won't be there either so just a handy little button reactivate our ricochet and let's and just to show you i could turn on this cube and it's still displayed in our normal shading mode 
This is now a list of objects, meaning if I were to drag in this cube, it's going to be bouncing around. And let's click the hide button again, so it's going to also hide the cube. You can now see that both of those models are being considered. So it is now bouncing around where the cube, and then it'll also only where the model is. So it's kind of like a bool in the way that this is now bouncing. So if I had to grab this ricochet, I could hit E for move and scoot this around, and it's going to kind of jitter as it's you know, bouncing off different surfaces. But I could move it outside. So now it's everywhere that the cube is not, because that's just the way it's bouncing. And the cube itself could also move up. And once again, only where those two are intersecting is that where it's going to appear. So it's kind of fun. And we can drag in as many models as we want for them being children. And it's kind of remotely linking into them. So we could modify this cube and it could be live in other parts of a rig. Let's say that is getting subdivided. And you see that's now getting rounded, but we're referencing it before it got rounded. So we still got that nice rectangular sharp edged cube. And then separately it's getting rounded. So we can kind of remote in anywhere else. And I just really like this workflow. I almost exclusively work in object mode, but we left the default as children because that behaves more like default cinema objects. But let's continue and talk about some additional features. To simplify, I will remove the subdivision surface and remove the cube and turn off the cube. All right, let's get rid of some of these bounces, make that a little bit more visually reasonable. And now let's talk about our orientation. Under orientation, you can see right now, this is our origin point. I can move this around, it's gonna bounce around. It looks a little chaotic here. Let me move it outside the model and make it seem less chaotic. As I take this, and let's even get rid of all the randomness. If I take this, as I move it, you see it's going to be behaving very much like a laser. And it's bouncing directly off that polygon, you know, like a laser on a mirror would be bouncing. I can hit R for rotate and rotate that. And then wherever it's bouncing off, it will bounce off that. And if we wanted, we could subdivide the surface to make a smoother transition between each of those. So that's just working nicely as it is. We can change it to different orientations, however. We can say it's on X plus, and I'll aim on X, and it can be, you know, Y and any orientation you want along those lines. In addition to that, we have an object mode. Now to show this, it's gonna be better to show it if we go to children. So I'll swap back to child mode and drop our model inside of it. And I'll even, actually before I do that, I'll reset my PSR and now drop that as a child. So now the object is again getting consumed and you see this is bouncing around inside. But now that the model is a child of it, if I were to try and move this ricochet, let's say I try and rotate it, I'm actually rotating the entire model we don't want to do that, we just want to change the ricochet. Now, there are things you can do like hold down seven as a shortcut, and now we are rotating just the ricochet and not the children, but that's, a, that's not an intuitive workflow. So what we did is we said, okay, orientation can actually be a remote object. So if we say object Z+, plus, it is now going to look for some other object. Now we could link to anything, but we also made it so you can just click create, and it'll create a new null with a name. And now instead of basing it off the axis, of the ricochet, we now are basing off this null. So now I'm free to move this around again. And let's create a few more bounces just so we can see it filling up some more. Let's put an extra zero. So yeah, we can now see that this is creating the origin of that. And that's why it's in child mode. So that, what, that's what that one is important for. And then we also have matrix mode, but I'm gonna save that for part two of the basics video because there is a lot of power in it. Back to our original basic mode and we're back to object mode. So now it's remoted in and this null isn't doing anything. So back to here, nice and simple. So let's talk about count mode. Uh, we're gonna be talking about count. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna save count until we talk about the matrix. Let's move to, move to our angle. So this is randomness and it's randomly bouncing around all over the place. Now we have a different setting called from surface. In order to show from surface, it's going to be good to be using alignment surface and have a bunch of it. So let's add a bunch of alignment and make it longer. So now you can see it's again taking on the form of the object. If I were to start adding randomness in here, what this is doing is just like, hey, I bounced off a surface and I can randomly rotate up to 12 degrees. So as I keep on increasing this, you're gonna see that the lines, they're gonna tend to wanna be a little bit more near the mesh, but they can randomly get up to 80 degrees away. So they're going to often be shooting right through the middle of the model. And that doesn't give you very much control over a surface alignment. So instead we have a angle from surface mode. So let's drag that down and say, I want my randomness from surface. So now we get random and tilt. With these bouncing around, I can say, hey, I want to start adding randomness in, but it's calculating it relative to the angle it collided with that surface. So you can start seeing that they are not shooting through the middle of the model. If I start panning around, you see that the middle of the model is pretty dang empty. And these are just rotating based on the way they collided with a surface. So this combines really well with surface. 
Now, random is going to be randomly 45 degrees up and 45 degrees down. We can zero that out and we can do a tilt. So as we add tilt, it's just saying, okay, just keep spinning 14 degrees every time you collide again. So another collision, another turn. So you see in certain areas, we're getting these really nice spirals and they just spin around. And those can combine so we can get, in general, tilting on the positive 14, but now we can add in some randomness. So in general, yes, it is going positive, but now it is you know, potentially going straight because the 14 might cancel each other out. So in general spiraling, but still some randomness. So I usually, I usually like to add a little bit of randomness no matter what. Now these values can be cranked up, but things will get a little bit weird quickly. So if we keep on cranking tilt up in the way they are, you can see we'll start getting these tiny little spirals and they can even get trapped in one spot if we go you know, like really far. And now we're doing almost a 90 degree turn so you get some pretty cool effects, but I don't know how sensical that is. Uh, so typically I would also combine this with a bunch of randomness and that can maybe start filling out the model a bunch. You see overall, let's talk about relative to surface. You'll see that overall there's a nice smooth model. The curves are very even, the poly counters are very even. But let's imagine that there'd be a very harsh, it's nice and smooth in, th in some spots, but somewhere else there's like this really harsh turn. Taking the from surface randomness, it would be a lot of power. So we've got this relative to surface checkbox. What that means is depending on the angle it hit previously and the angle it hit next, it's going to change the power of the application of it. So if it hits a really sharp angle, it's going to apply less power. So it just makes the curves look a little bit more consistent. But because there's that big multiplier on it, you tend to need to use larger numbers. And these values are unclamped. Like I said, we don't want to clamp anything that we don't have to. So you crank those numbers up and now it's relative to the surface and you just should get a little bit more control over that. I tend not to use relative to the surface, but it's pretty useful in specific circumstances. So turning that back off, let's talk about our final setting in this current basic video. And the next one, I'll go back to random. The next one is we've been using alignment surface, but let's do align normal. So drag that to zero and say normal. As I drag this up, you see that's natural bouncing around, no randomness. As I add, increase this from the normal, it is taking on the angle of the normal of the polygon that it collides with. So it's going straight away from the surface. So if we crank this all the way up, you see that everything is, it's like doing the opposite of surface alignment. And instead of hanging out near the polygons, it's actually trying to get as far away from them as they can. So they're tending to hang out near the middle. So that combines really nicely, of course, with some randomness. No matter how much randomness we have, it's going to tend to stay away from the surface and fill out the form a little bit more. It's got very specific use cases, but I definitely find myself using it, um, say, in a circumstance where let's duplicate that ricochet. And, and uh, I don't need to duplicate that model. So again, another nice use case of being able to duplicate this and remote into the object is I don't need doubles of that model. But in this case, I could have one that I want to have 100% surface alignment with no randomness and one that's completely surface aligned. I'll change the display color on this. Let's go to a nice green, just so we can distinguish between the two. So now I've got this one, which is very much hanging out in the middle and a different one that's on the outside. So you could very much, um, if you're trying to maybe wrap this in yarn, you could have this outside one create a bunch of lines, but you don't want the inside to look hollow. So then you do something like this to be bouncing around and fill in that inner part. So I definitely do these types of combinations. So um, I think that's actually going to wrap up the part one of this basics video. We've got more things to talk about. As I mentioned, you can always click this question mark button and get access to the help page and all of the different training videos and the examples page, which will get filled out over time with different scene files and breakdowns of how I make cool different things with uh, Ricochet. So that will wrap this video up and I'll see you in the next one.